Welcome to Main Street Living. The Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod invites you to join us in worshiping our Lord. Reverend Steve Weisfenning brings us today's message, Walk in Christ. Reverend Weisfenning will lead us in worship after our opening hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for His sake God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, He gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord who has begun this good work in us bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The Old Testament lesson for the 10th Sunday after Pentecost comes from Genesis 18, verses 20-33. Then the Lord said to Abraham, Because the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and their sin is very grave, I will go down to see whether they have done altogether according to the outcry that has come to me. And if not, I will know. So the men turned from there and went toward Sodom, but Abraham still stood before the Lord. Then Abraham drew near and said, Will you indeed sweep away the righteous with the wicked? Suppose there are fifty righteous within the city. Will you then sweep away the place and not spare it for the fifty righteous who are in it? 
Far be it from you to do such a thing, to put the righteous to death with the wicked, so that the righteous fare as the wicked. Far be that from you. Shall not the judge of all the earth do what is just? And the Lord said, If I find at Sodom fifty righteous in the city, I will spare the whole place for their sake. Abraham answered and said, Behold, I have undertaken to speak to the Lord, who I who am but dust and ashes. Suppose five of the fifty righteous are lacking. Will you destroy the whole city for a lack of five? And he said, I will not destroy it if I find forty-five there. Again he spoke to him and said, Suppose forty are found there, he answered. He answered, For the sake of forty, I will not do it. Then he said, O oh, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak. Suppose thirty are found there. He answered, I will not do it if I find thirty there. He said, Behold, I have undertaken to speak to the Lord. Suppose twenty are found there. He answered, For the sake of twenty, I will not destroy it. Then he said, O oh, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak again but this once. Suppose ten are found there. He answered, For the sake of ten, I will not destroy it. And the Lord went his way when he had finished speaking to Abraham, and Abraham returned to his place. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is written in Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 through 15. Therefore, as you received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in Him, rooted and built up in Him and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. See to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the world, and not according to Christ. For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily, and you have been filled in him, who is the head of all rule and authority. In him also you were circumcised with a circumcision made without hands, by putting off the body of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through faith in the powerful working of God, who raised him from the dead. And you who were dead in your trespasses and un the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made alive together with him, having forgiven us all our trespasses by canceling the record of debt that stood against us with its legal demands. This he set aside, nailing it to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and put them to open shame by triumphing over them in him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel is according to St. Luke, the 11th chapter, verses 1 through 13. Now Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. And he said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone who is indebted to us, and lead us not into temptation. And he said to them, Which of you who has a friend will go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves, for a friend of mine has arrived on a journey, and I have nothing to set before him. And he will answer from within, do not bother me. The door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, 
though he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend. Yet because of his impudence, he will rise and give him whatever he needs. And I tell you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and the one who knocks it will be opened. What father among you, if his son asks for a fish, will instead of a fish give him a serpent? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for my message today is from Colossians chapter 2, and I highlight this verse. Therefore, as you received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in Him. Just about all toddlers at some point after they've learned how to walk will slip their tiny little feet into mom or dad's giant shoes and try to walk around in them. Literally, the child is walking in mom or dad's shoes. And metaphorically, when we want a person to understand what it's like to be somebody else, 
to understand what they're going through or to understand where they're coming from will tell them to walk in his or her shoes. For us as Christians, this happens in baptism. Only it's a whole lot more than just putting, just walking in Jesus' shoes. It's a, an entire putting on of Christ. As Paul puts it in Romans chapter 6, we are united with Christ and His death and resurrection through baptism. Having been buried with Christ in baptism, we are to put off our old sinful flesh. That is, we are to leave behind and detach ourselves from the ways, the thoughts, and the patterns of this world. But dead people don't walk. And so in baptism, you were also raised with Jesus through faith in the powerful working of God who raised Jesus from the dead. So that just as Jesus was raised from the dead and now lives, God makes you alive together with him through baptism. So Paul makes this point perfectly clear at the beginning of our text for today. As you received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. And our walk in Christ isn't just for an hour or two on Sunday mornings. But our walk in Jesus extends to every aspect of our life. Our family, our job, our education, our finances, our entertainment, our politics. How do you demonstrate your faith and make it a priority to your children at home, at your workplace, at school? How do you go about handling your money? How does your faith in Jesus shape your activities? the music you listen to, the shows you watch, the movies you see, the websites you search? How does your Christian faith shape who you're going to vote for? Or are, these, or are there other things and factors that play a greater role in your walk through life? The Christian faith walk of the Colossians was threatened by Judaizers, those who insisted that they live like the Jews, to walk in their shoes, so to speak, and carry on with Jewish practices in order to be true followers of Jesus. Today, our Christian faith walk is still threatened by outside influences by philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the world, and not according to Christ. The way we think, the way we handle our problems, the way we go about our day-to-day -day lives is so heavily influenced by philosophies, empty deception, human traditions, and the governing principles of this world that our walk through life resembles that of the world rather than that of Christ and His Word. We've convinced ourselves that certain ways of living and certain lifestyles, especially when it comes to sex and sexuality and marriage and family, is okay and is to be accepted as the norm despite the Word of God clearly indicating that such lifestyles are sinful and contrary to God's design. We've somehow gotten the idea that all religions are created equal and that they're all basically one and the same, that every religion is about being a nice person or following all the rules, when in fact that's not what Christianity is at all. Christianity is actually the very opposite of that. Christianity is all about coming to grips with the fact that we aren't good people or nice people or that we can't keep all the rules. and Therefore, we need Jesus to do all of that for us in our place and believing and trusting that Jesus has taken care of everything for us. But then again, we pride ourselves in being spiritual and not, and not religious. That we use God talk in our everyday speech and believe in some sort of 
higher power that only intervenes in our lives when things are going good and who exists for the sole purpose of making me happy and bowing down to every desire and wish that I have. And that our, spiritually, that our spirituality is based on our emotions and our feelings instead of something concrete and tangible. That if we don't have some sort of emotional high or that tingly feeling in our stomach, then it must not be a God thing. We walk in the ways of the world when we tell ourselves that our families are more important than God that our job is more important, that our education is more important, that our constitution is more important. And we show it by our actions. We make these things a higher priority than being rooted and built up in Jesus and establishing ourselves in the faith. But we are not to walk over, around, or through Jesus. We walk in Him step by step. And why? Because Jesus is God in the flesh, who is the head of all rule and authority. And Jesus has claimed you as His own through baptism and faith. We walk in Christ because Jesus walked the walk in the way of the cross for you. Back in the day when prisoners on death row were executed via the electric chair, the prison guards would shout out, Dead man walking! Indicating that the prisoner was off to his certain death. And Jesus was, in a sense, a dead man walking as he went to his certain death on the cross for you. But as I said earlier, dead men don't walk. And so Jesus was raised from the dead back to life. And just as toddlers like to walk in their parents' shoes, we walk in our Lord Jesus. And we too were dead men walking. But in your baptism, Jesus crucified you and your sin, nailing it to the cross to forgive you of all your sins and trespasses. In baptism, Jesus raised you up from death to life so that we would walk in him. Amen. The peace of God that surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us pray the prayer that our Lord Jesus has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. We are happy that you joined us for worship today. Reverend Weissfenning is the pastor of St. John's Lutheran Church in Yankton, South Dakota. Sunday morning worship is held at 8 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. with Wednesday evening worship at 6.30 p.m. Thank you for tuning in to Main Street Living. I am Pastor Scott Seiler, the President of the South Dakota District of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, and one of the preachers on Main Street Living. St. Peter urges his readers at the end of his second letter 
to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Each week on this television program, pastors from our churches bring you God's Word centered in that gospel of Jesus Christ so that you may grow in knowing and experiencing His grace in your life, especially that you may know that forgiveness of your sins and everlasting life are His gifts to you by Christ's saving work on the cross and through His resurrection from the dead. It is only through your generous gifts that this Christ-centered program can stay on the air. And so we would ask of you two things. One, please pray for Main Street Living asking God that this program may continue to be broadcast for the spiritual welfare of each of you. Two, please consider giving a gift to Main Street Living. This program is made possible only through the generous contributions of people like you. You may send your gift to this address, Main Street Living, 1400 South Duluth Avenue, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, 57105. Again, the address is Main Street Living, 1400 South Duluth Avenue, Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Again, thank you for listening to this program. We pray that you may grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and that you may live a grateful life in response to that grace. Thank you for joining us in worship today. If you would like more information on an LCMS church in your town, please contact the district office at 3501 Gateway Boulevard, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, 57106, or log on to www.lcms.org. If this program has been a blessing to you, please send your comments and contributions to Main Street Living, 1400 South Duluth, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, 57105. We appreciate your prayers and support of this ministry. Through your continued support, we can spread the good news of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Main Street Living is a production of Main Street Living Incorporated in conjunction with the South Dakota District of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod and is supported by member churches and viewers like you.
created and produced by many people interested in spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ.